Let's suppose that we are asked to use the radial probability distribution to calculate the most probable location of our electron inside the ground state of the hydrogen atom. So basically what that means is we have to use the following equation for the radial probability distribution to calculate where our electron is most likely found at any given moment in time around that nucleus of the ground state hydrogen atom. So, recall that the radial probability P depends on R, where R is the distance away from the center of the nucleus of the atom. And P with respect to R is equal to 4R squared divided by R naught cubed multiplied by E to the negative 2 R divided by R naught, where R naught is simply Bohr radius. It's 5.29 times 10 to negative 11 meters. So basically, if we take this equation and we plot it on the x-y axis, we get the following green curve, where our x-axis is the distance r away from the center of the nucleus of the atom, and our y-axis represents the value of the radial probability p. Now, p only really depends on r. Now, if we examine the following curve, we see that the highest point on the curve is given by this point, and this point represents the highest value of the radial probability, and this is in fact the most probable location. So, if we draw the following vertical line directly downward, this unknown R quantity represents the maximum or the most probable location of our electron, which corresponds to the maximum value of the probability density, the radial probability. So basically, if we use a bit of calculus, we can find what this R is. So notice if we look on the curve, at this point, our slope of the curve changes from positive to negative. And exactly at this position, the slope of the curve is equal to zero. Now, by definition, the derivative of our function is equal to the slope at that point. So if we find what the derivative is at this point, and we set the derivative equal to zero, we can solve for the r as we'll see in just a moment. So basically, since we know what this equation is for the radial probability distribution, we can use calculus to find the value of r such that the PR is a maximum and the PR is a maximum at this exact position so that's the peak value notice that the slope of the curve at this maximum value is equal to zero this means that the derivative at that point is also equal to zero because by definition the derivative is really the slope at that position along the curve so, basically we want to find the derivative of this equation, but this equation consists of two different functions. So let's suppose that this function, we let this function equal to f of r, and this function is equal to g of r. So if f of r is equal to 4r squared divided by r naught cubed, and g of r is equal to e to the negative negative 2r divided by r naught, then we can apply the product rule to calculate what the derivative of pr at this position given by r. So the derivative of p at this location r is equal to the product of the derivative of f multiplied by g of r plus our f of r multiplied by the derivative of g with respect to r. So what exactly is the derivative of f? The derivative of f is simply 2 multiplied by 4 or 8 multiplied by r divided by r naught cubed. And 
and this quantity is simply given by this. So we have 8r divided by r naught q multiplied by the exponent e to negative 2r divided by r naught. And we add that to f of r, which is simply this quantity multiplied by the derivative of this guy. So we have negative 2 divided by r naught multiplied by e to the power of negative 2r divided by r naught. So we add these two quantities and we set them equal to zero because the derivative or the slope of our function of the curve at the highest value at the peak is equal to zero. Now, let's actually multiply these two terms. So this term becomes 8r e to negative 2r divided by r naught divided by r naught cubed. And this becomes, so this positive becomes a negative because if we multiply 4 by negative 2, we get negative 8. So we have negative 8, 8, uh, negative 8 multiplied by r squared divided by r uh, naught to the fourth power because we combine these two denominators, we multiply them out, and we multiply that by e to negative 2r divided by r naught. And we set this equal to zero. So, now let's notice that we have common terms that appear on this term as well as on this term. So we can bring out 8, we can bring out the r, we can bring out the r naught q from the denominator, and we can also bring out the e to the negative 2r divided by r naught. So we have this common term multiplied by 1 minus r divided by r naught, and this is still equal to 0. So basically, if we multiply this out, we get back this quantity. Now, notice that if we actually divide both sides, the left and the right side, by this common term, this will basically cancel out, and if we divide zero by this term, we still get zero on the right side. So the left side becomes one minus r divided by r naught, and the right side is still zero. So now if we bring this quantity to the right side, we have one equal to r divided by r naught. Now if we multiply both sides by r naught, we get that r is equal to r naught. So we see that the highest point on the curve corresponds to the radius of r naught, which is basically the Bohr radius. It's equal to 5.29 times 10 to negative 11 meters.